interviews with business owners and veteran executives who share their wisdom and expertise to help you de-stress, free up time, and make more money. Profits of IT. Welcome back to the Profits of IT. I am Jim Punzenberger, your host and the creator of the Manage Prospecting System. If you're looking to generate new clients or partners without cold calling, ad spend, or spamming, be sure to check out ManageProspectingSystem.com. I'm very excited to uh, have a very special guest with me today. She's been a believer in the cloud for a long, long, long time. Amy Rutt. She is the founder and CEO of uh, um, Cybercom. Cyrocom. Cyrocom. That's a code. Yep. Cyrocom. Yeah, with the M. Cyrocom. Cyrocom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tongue twister there. That is. uh, (laughs) Today's a cloud evangelist. So, uh, Amy, please uh, uh, say hi to the audience and tell us a quick bit about your company. Sure. Well, first, Jim, thank you for having me on this afternoon and grabbing a cup of virtual coffee with you. I appreciate that. Um, We are a 22-year-old managed service provider. Our corporate headquarters are in Herndon, Virginia, and uh, we are a 100% virtual company. We have staff located across the country. We started in 2001 by providing hosted Microsoft Exchange for our customers. So we, we know what it is to sell small 20, 30, 10, $9 items, SKUs, if you will, uh-huh. and support critical, infra- critical applications for small to medium sized businesses. It's been a part of our DNA since we started. And um, I just, I'm super excited to, to talk with you today because I don't think there's been any time in my almost 30 years of being in SaaS sales of any time like this. This is just quite extraordinary. So the opportunity is is just immense and and it's a lot of fun. Yes, uh, I love uh, having fun with you for the next 10 or so-ish minutes uh, chatting about this. Um, So, and I just wanted to thank you for coming on uh, and uh, sharing and your willingness to share your uh, wisdom and expertise here. I'll do my best. So, uh, Amy, uh, what would you say or what do you contribute your success to uh, in business or what one might say is their superpower and Mm. how can others, uh, you know, learn from that to be more successful themselves? I think that when you're an entrepreneur, and you're entering into that lifestyle, that world, um, you have to have a very long view. You're gonna get a lot of no's, a lot of punches. Um, I always considered myself to be, you know, that punching clown as a kid that you punch it and it would bounce right back Mm -hmm. up. And that's just what you have to have that mentality that you just keep getting right back up and dusting yourself off. So there's, I think, for me, the success ingredients have been, I've always had a very long view. I think starting the business by providing hosted Microsoft Exchange um, was is really indicative of that. I mean, we had people say no to us for many, many years. Uh-huh. You're um, way ahead of the time. Back oh, in it was a lot of work. Um, and so the persistence and the long view and sticking to that vision and um, and just putting your customer, I think second to persistence and the, the, the long view would be keeping your customer's technology requirements at the core of how you're building out your business, who you're hiring, and how you can help them for your, because you'll, it's such an ongoing edification in this industry, uh, in this career. So, I, I'd say those are the three that I would put to a, to be a part of our, if you will, our superpowers. Uh huh. So uh, if I wanted to develop these superpowers myself, 
uh, any tips on how I can develop them and if I uh, maybe I'm weak in these areas and want to improve in these areas, do you have any tips for me on how to do that? Well, I think I think persistence and grit just comes with wanting it so badly and knowing that there's there's going to be days that are great and days that are really bad. Um, and you just even them out and you go forward. I think that nothing will nothing will really break you, right? As long as you've uh -huh. got your numbers, you understand what your budget is, you understand what your pricing is. So I, I think know what your pricing strategy is, know what you need to make, know your gross margins, know that um, know where you are at within the marketplace so that when you do start selling and you st start ramping your business up, um, that your compounded interest is happening to your bottom line. So you don't have to readjust that. We learned that and that's a painful lesson. It takes a while to correct that. So I would say that's a really important piece because that helps you stay with that grit and that perseverance because you can see just your financial abilities are compounding by how many sales and customers you're adding. And I'm assuming this is a reoccurring revenue business, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the other thing to uh, that I would say is, um, especially in sales, it's, it's a different game now, um, uh, but it is still the same game. And that is that um, we are specialists in gap sales. So we're, we're providing these technology as a services to our customers and we're helping them digitally transform their environments. And those are gonna be smaller sales, and you want those steady eddy customers, you want the customers that want to make those incremental changes to their environments. And you want to make sure that you're ahead of that with what your, with what your, uh, your support contracts and your master services agreements look like, because you want everything to be papered really clean for that customer and for yourself, because they're only going to add more services, right? And, um, and I think, you also want to be a ferocious reader of the industry and what what some of what I do is this, I look for where are the big players going, what's their research and development budgets focused on from Microsoft to Google to AWS, because they'll give you some ideas and where they're spending their money and, and that kind of gives me clarity on what we should continue to focus on in the longer term. So it's always a balance between the current and your delivery and the future and making sure that you're laying the proper pavers down to get there without uh, without incident. Mm -hmm. So you said uh, you mentioned, you know, looking at Google, Microsoft, AWS. Is there an easy way of obtaining this information on where they're, uh, you know, investing their their dollars? If you're a Microsoft partner, you can attend Microsoft partner events virtually. And um, a lot of them will lay down uh, different different uh, areas of services that they're, you know, whether it's Teams or SharePoint online. And I think as, as you uh, attend those types of events, you can certainly ask the question of, of your moderator, you know, uh, where's the roadmap at? You can look also, Microsoft has excellent documentation for their roadmap, and so does, so does Google. Um, AWS plays a little bit more closer to their to to the hip as far as releasing that type of information, but um, what I would say is look at what if you're industry specific. So if you're a specialist in an industry or a vertical, so we we have a lot of lawyers, we have a lot of healthcare. Um, I pay particularly uh, close attention to the products. Uh, technology products that those customers use. And that gleans a lot for me as well. And then also the integration paths of how quickly are they integrating with, you know, whether it be PC law with, with Microsoft and let's just say, you know, single sign on or something like that. Um, so it's always looking for the little wrench turns to help that customer really optimize what now is a pretty exploding software as a service monthly spend. Got it. Uh, any other thoughts regarding this? Well, I have so many, Jim, but I, you know, <laughs> that can be kind of dry. 
<laughs> what what are so the what are, what what are not dry the thoughts that are not oh. dry regarding this? Well, I think it's you know let's go back to what a fascinating time it is. Um, it's a fascinating time for customers, absolutely. Um, your your customer has a pretty good idea of what their tech stack needs to be, but yet there are gray areas. Um, and then you have an explosion of software as a service, um, and in all industries, you know, trying to solve some really very, very serious issues. Um, and, and I think as that continues to gain more momentum and we see different players become more mature in their delivery, um, I, I just think that, that SaaS is really, really a, a great space to be in. And I think one of the things that, that MSPs should think about is how do you help that customer manage beyond your tech stack and help them manage an industry tech stack. And that's only going to make you more of an expert because you have to get to understand that more. Um, but that's where the work is at. And when I say that, you have a reoccurring revenue that's happening for your business and that's growing. But as that grows, you also have the opportunity, as I said, when a customer makes an increase of services or they, they make an increase in a license or a subscription, that usually constitutes a, a project sprint. And that's where your professional services lie. So I think behind all that, the, the really serious part of this is the operational. And, um, and it, it's, a different, it's a different delivery game is what I'm what we're seeing. And so we're making a lot of adjustments to, to make it simpler for the customer, more transparent, um, easier for them. Um, because as much as they know their technologies, they're still inundated with choices. Got it. So any final thoughts? If you are stepping into this wonderful journey of entrepreneurship, I wish you all the best in health and happiness because it's it's really it's really to be cherished. It is. Uh, I've been uh, myself in this path for a long time, twenty years, and uh, it is quite uh, well. It's been very interesting for myself, and mm -hmm. um, I welcome others to to it too, and hope they find it interest, as interesting as I have. Oh, that's great. That's great. Congratulations, Jim. That's a long time. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, and you've been in it, uh, I think, I've heard longer than myself. So. <laughs> Not by much. <laughs> uh, and do you, I guess we got an opportunity here for an ask anybody that should be reaching out to you and why should they be reaching out to you? Um, well, one of the things that we have done in that back office automation and really working with our customers to help them get more out of their software as a service subscriptions um, is we've created a marketplace. And so what we've done is we've put all of our products and continue to put more products up on our marketplace. We sell direct to those small to medium sized businesses. But I know there's a lot of folks in our industry who um, don't have the same scale or they don't have the same uh, community to refer to about how to help grow. It's a different sales game and I understand mm -hmm. that. And um, we're, we're welcoming and very excited to have an affinity program with other MSPs where we will be your CSP for Microsoft, and with that, um, really help you price out what we think is a competitive bid, as well as um, provide you what our sales and engineering expertise has been to further increase the customer spend to us per month. But by doing that, also increasing the customers, your value to that customer through uh, deeper professional services. So if there's somebody out, an MSP out there or an IT a uh, consultant out there that wants to have that reoccurring revenue come back to them. Um, we welcome that conversation on how I can help them do that and put a plan together so they get rewarded 
of the work that they're doing in supporting their customer. And they also have a team here at Siricom Cloud that they can pivot to who really know all of this work really well. Mm -hmm. And we can help you shape um, really, I think, uh, pretty valuable pipelines. Sounds like a great opportunity. So if uh, somebody's interested in this, how should they reach out to you? They can email me directly at arut, A-R-U-T-T, -T, as in Tom, at siricomcloud.com. And you can visit our marketplace and uh, at siricomcloud.com as well and send an email to sales at, and I'm be sure to be one of those folks on that list who gets that email. So I welcome in a conversation too about if there's anything that I can do to shed more light on how I think this is changing pretty radically and for the MSP environment will continue to do so. I think certainly within the next five, seven years are gonna be very disruptive for us. I agree that uh, the future is gonna continue to get disrupted by uh, cloud technologies. Mm. Yeah, exciting well, time. Yes, very exciting. And uh, well, Amy, thank you again for coming on and sharing. And uh, it's been great to, to talking with you for the last uh, 10 minutes or so. Thanks a lot, Jim, for having me. I really appreciate it. And until the next time on the Profits of IT, I am Jim Punzenberger, your host, the creator of the Managed Prospecting System. If you're looking to generate sales opportunities without cold calling, ad spend, or spamming, be sure to check out managedprospectingsystem.com. Thank you for tuning in to the Profits of IT. Please smash that like button, subscribe, and share.